Today's guest uh, is a... She's blind, man. I'm going to be honest with you. If you think she's not blind, you're nuts. So today's guest is um, is a woman who's... She's like kind of like the Amelia kind of sight heart kind of. She's just that pioneer. You know, she's that, she's that peeping bad girl. So she is... Oh, man, I don't know what I'm talking about, but... She also is a voiceover actress. Um, she is a teacher. Um, she works with people who have suffered from the same thing she suffers from. Today's guest is blind, and I've always wanted to meet somebody that's blind and sit down with them. And so I'm really grateful already. Ladies and gentlemen, the talented and lovely Tanya Milojevic. I'm just sitting over here right now, Tanya. I'm not doing anything. Really. <laughs> drinking some water. Yeah, just drinking some water. I <laughs> uh, kind of have some notes, but I'm not really looking at them. Um, and is it fun for you when people like kind of describe to you what they're doing around you? Or, or do you feel like... It's helpful. It um, is? Sometimes I can tell by audio cues. So, for example, I could hear you opening your water bottle and taking a swig. Mm -hmm. So... But yeah, um, especially sometimes if I can't tell by someone's tone, I'll ask, are you this or that? Or did I interpret this correctly? But, you know, once in a while, usually people's voices are expressive, so I can tell. Mm. And so you are 100% blind, like you've always been blind? Actually, I have retinopathy of prematurity. So I was born um, sighted. Mm -hmm. It was just that I was premature two months and had to sit in the incubator for a couple months. And then the oxygen... Uh, extra oxygen detached my retinas so I had to have some surgeries to reattach and I was very lucky to be able to come to the U.S. from Serbia where I was from mm -hmm. and have those reattached somewhat here in the U.S. here in the U.S. yeah Dr. Rossi like how blind are you though like if I had to guess like like do you feel pretty blind Oh, total. I mean, it, I have enough vision to get me into trouble, yeah. but <laughs> it's about 22,000 in one eye and 2,700 in the other. So every time I have a laser surgery, because I developed glaucoma um, due to the scar tissue after my surgeries mm -hmm. initially, the laser surgeries that I do or did every couple of years, haven't done one in a while, thankfully, those reduce my acuity each time and there is a risk that I can go totally blind in in my both of my eyes or one of them depending and when you say acuity what does that mean I mean like what I can see how well I can see things so the clarity uh, and the detail that I pick up for example if I say I have 22,000 mm -hmm. what you can see at 20 feet or rather what you can see at 2,000 feet I can see at 20 feet so you know you let's say you have better distance vision mm -hmm. Um, the clarity of your vision is a lot more detailed and all-encompassing. So your field is a lot wider than mine. Mm -hmm. Mine is tunnel vision, which means my field is 10 degrees. Okay. Um, so a lot of times, like, I hear about people that are colorblind, and to me that seems like, honestly, like kind of a bunch of bullshit. Do you feel like that? <laughs> um, I mean, I think colorblind is definitely a thing. There are people that are born colorblind where their hues are, like, gray, black, and white. And that's all they can really see. They have different monochrome tones of... But to call it color blind, like I feel like it should be like, I, do you ever feel color like... Color deficient? Oh, yeah, let's call it color, like, let's call it like, hey, kind of confused, you know? Like, yeah. Let's don't go all the way to blind. Like blind seems like almost something that should be a little bit more reserved for people that actually can't really see that well. Do you guys, is there any vibe like that in the in the blind community where, where there's like kind of like, you know, like darkness beef with like people that are colorblind or anything like that? Um, in terms of that, not that I've noticed, but people do get upset over the terms visually impaired versus totally blind. Some people like to say, that they have a visual impairment or mm. they are low vision, depending on what their acuity is and how much, whether or not they can read print. So for example, someone that can see traffic lights outside in the daytime, they can read signs, they can read print and navigate maybe with minimal use of a cane. They call them high, high partials. Mm -hmm. 
And then there are people who are totally blind or who are lights, um, who have some light perception. And we we do like to categorize ourselves, some of us, in, in those various categories. But then there are a lot of people for the sake of the public who just say, even if they're not totally blind, I'm blind, and just call it a day because yeah, the public yeah. gets that would be me. really confused. That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want to be a high parcel. That sounds like somebody that's trying to be fancy to me. Like, I would rather right. be. I know, it does. Yeah. I'd rather be like, look, guys, I'm out. Okay. I'm a high parcel. Yeah. I don't associate with you. Go away. Yeah. High yeah. parcel sounds like somebody that's like in one of those, um, like that movie with Katniss Everdeen, you know? Oh, yes. I'm a high partial. Yeah. Put me near the cornucopia first. Yeah. Like <laughs> so they I can live. get the best weapons. Yeah. yeah. That's what it sounds like. Because <laughs> there's a lot of high parcels even just in regular do especially in hollywood this place is full of high parcels man. oh man jesus <laughs> it's really uh it's a little bit creepy almost out here mm -hmm. um so do you like so if i reach across the table right now and and, and touch your hand like if you put your hand out right mm -hmm. okay can right. you tell by like touching my hand like like how old you feel like i am or do you oh get... that's an interesting question i've actually never got that um, well, because I can imagine your senses are better than mine. Or this is my perception is that your senses are way better than mine. So, so I'm thinking like, you know, do you is your sense of touch like at a level that I could couldn't even imagine? You know. Um. So I would say that it's all in how much you use it. I think anyone is capable of developing sense of touch more or hearing, vision, etc. So you focus mainly on what you see around you and maybe don't focus as much on audio cues because you don't need them as much. You can uh. you can see what's around you and that sense compensates for the others. That is your primary sense. Mm -hmm. For me, I would say mainly my hearing is my primary and of course I read braille. So I use touch for that. But what's interesting is I would say my sense of touch in my index fingers is better than my sense of touch in my other fingers because mm -hmm. I use that for Braille and I've ah. developed that sensitivity in those fingers. So do you learn something then about like almost do you feel like, so then with that being said, like so your sense of touch in your index fingers is much more acute because you use it for braille you use that's your main fingers you use for braille right i would say so do you then do you think that this could be possible that if somebody used their shoulder for braille for long enough yeah that they would be able to develop a sense of how to read even or their toes there are there are folks that like I've seen Oh, toe off. So you're talking about people that are just towing off, huh? That or, yeah. <laughs> or they use their toes to read. Yeah. That sounds <laughs> like a guy. Off. Like a guy like that sounds like a line a guy would use on a girl, you know, like, hey, I can use my toes to read. <laughs> oh yeah, like a pickup line <laughs> yeah, yeah. at a bar. Yeah. <laughs> Let me read your shirt. I can yeah. use my toes, you know? <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean they do make braille shirts, right? And it says don't read me or or don't touch me or something in braille oh, and yeah, then as a, you're as you're a, reading you realize that oh, yeah they have a <laughs> they have bumper sticker of... i know that says you're driving too close and it's in braille and it's on like nice which makes sense really <laughs> i'd love uh, to see that yeah if you're that close i think you gotta back off <laughs> you got a problem you're gonna get run over yeah <laughs> um but so so you feel like for you your sense of hearing is really acute I would say I've developed it more so, and I pay attention to minute um, sounds, whereas that kind of goes both ways, because in dance music, my boyfriend loves to put up the music really loud, mm -hmm. because, it, you know, it's sometimes, like, especially if we're working out or something. So there are, in dance music, high-pitched, buzzy noises that almost sound like a like a, an electric chair, you mm -hmm. know? And it's painful. Like, the oh. louder it is, the painful it is, and I just have this, like, instinctual, ah! you know recoil reaction put my f hands over my ears no and he thinks it's the funniest thing ever who makes some of the most painful music out there because obviously uh, you have very acute senses there is a german band that i've heard i think it's called republic one or something oh yeah and it is i i'm just i sit there i'm like no <laughs> oh, <laughs> turn the volume down <laughs> And I'm what scared. about what about an American artist? Maybe <laughs> I mean that makes some really, really, you hmm. know, just some real junk. Like I mean, I'm thinking for me, it's Nicki Minaj. Oh, yeah, some of her songs are interesting. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. Um, but is there a band or something that kind of you're like, oh? Hmm. I would say probably some of the the death metal bands. Like, I and I used to love death metal, so I'm not trying to rag on them here. <laughs> But um, Cannibal Corpse, oh, yeah, for example, sounds... they got some, it's just painful high notes in, in the 
solos and well they don't want you to live through the songs a lot of it sounds like no they want you to become a cannibal corpse yeah they have ulterior it sounds like they have really (laughs) ulterior motives yeah i Um, think so is there it's just so interesting so it almost it seems so to your sense of hearing to me would almost be like almost it would seem like a superpower almost a little bit ah i don't know i mean if i were daredevil and had a weapon in my cane that'd be awesome but yeah yeah no (laughs) i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's it's that good but it does certainly help in picking up cues and what's going on in the environment environment around me so especially for navigation i use my sense of hearing let's say there's a waterfall that I know I'll have to pass or, or keep behind me as I'm traveling forward. And then there's an ice cream parlor and they play particular music. And there are smells associated. All of that not only triggers memory to help you like mm-hmm. sort of map it out in your head, but it gives you a constant that you can rely on as you're, as you're traveling. Or even when you're watching films without audio description. Do you feel like a detective a little bit then? Like when every day when you wake up, do you feel like <laughs> almost like Inspector Gadget a little? Because you got to kind of like... That would be cool, Figure actually. It out. Hey, maybe that'll make my mornings a little easier, especially when <laughs> the week drags on and I just want the weekend to be there so I can enjoy and record and have fun. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. yeah. We, hey, some... I'll try that. That's a good suggestion. <laughs> but do you feel like like I'm just trying to think of what it's like to not like, you know, to be to not have sight, to be blind, to be sight impaired. Like I'm trying to think of like if my brain would wake up every day and ev- and the world would seem like more vibrant. Yeah, is that what it seems like? It can, certainly. Uh, especially if you're looking forward to the day and you're in a in a great mood, it can definitely seem filled with with a lot of different things. It can can get a little overwhelming sometimes. With, Not having sight, you mean? It, yeah, um, if you're in a loud environment, for example. Oh, yeah. Like being at a bar or a club, um, even at a convention. Or, or at like a Chelsea Handler. Yeah, Listening concert. Listening to her, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, just something that slips out of me. But um, so so places like that, because why there's too much going on? There's too much. Yeah. And sometimes what I do, what helps in those situations, because it's hard to navigate if, first of all, if there's flashing lights, like at a carnival, mm-hmm. loud music, loud, a lot of people talking, it's hard to orient yourself. So what I'll do is I'll, like if I'm standing somewhere waiting to navigate, I will put my hand on something that doesn't move, some solid object, like a chair or a table, mm-hmm. and just stand there and kind of listen and try to figure out where stuff is. Mm. Or if possible, navigate when the environment is quiet, map it out for myself, and then it's not so, you know, crazy. Yeah. But the dog actually, my dog here, Naboo. Naboo, yeah. She's <laughs> very good at navigating outside. So if I'm in a loud restaurant, which happens a lot, you know, loud music, mm-hmm. I'll just say, okay, Nabu, outside, outside, find the door, find the door, come on, come on, come on, come on. Do you want a treat? Let's go. And she's, uh, <laughs> she finds the door. And she helps you leave. Mm hmm. And um, she's very beautiful. Oh, thank you. And she She's also, I noticed that she has very beautiful eyes. Yeah, she wears makeup for me. Does she I don't she have really? to. <laughs> she has uh, not real makeup, but she's got markings around her eyes, and it looks like eyeliner. That's what I've been told. Uh, it's so funny. When you when I met her a few minutes ago, when you introduced me, the first thing I noticed about her, I never noticed about I mean, I'd seen some animals with pretty eyes and stuff before. They got Smushy the Cat has some beautiful eyes. He has an <laughs> Instagram page. But... Aww. um, But... She has beautiful eyes. Like Thank they, you. It's almost, at first I was like, holy smokes, like did they, did you guys swap eyes or something? Like, cause she's got <laughs> some, like it's just crazy. It's almost like uh, that you were carting around a real set of freaking peepers right there on mm. the, on, uh, on, on Naboo. Um, do some animals, do you get a different sense from certain animals than other animals? I'm just wondering like if you can get different senses than I can from from animals do you mean like uh bonding type or yeah, their can, intentions yeah do some animals feel to you like like what does a, a dog seem like to you oh they're very lovey usually they uh pick up on our emotions and our body language as well as facial expressions really well mm. and the body positioning like where their tail is lo- is positioned or how how they're uh, laying sometimes or even the enthusiasm of how they greet us those can tell us a lot about how they're feeling and i find myself talking to her like she's a real person you know all the time because she's with me everywhere i go so wow that's so interesting though and now what about a cat do you have the same interactions with a cat 
I used to have a cat when I was a kid, and I had a very, you know, solid bond with her. She was an outdoor cat, and she would sleep on my uh, in bed with me sometimes. Or I used to carry her by her neck, I guess, as a kid. Uh, my mom told me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which is not the right way to carry a cat. <laughs> <That's> very. <odd. laughs> but she never cared. Like she was so sweet and chill. She didn't. Was she ever alive? Protest. It sounds. Like I know, right? If you That's were carrying her by her <laughs> neck, it could be. I know. I was a little bit, just didn't care. (laughs) But animals got along with me just fine. Um, Do you get different vibes? Like, can you get a different intuition from, say, like a snake or a frog? Do you feel like they have? I'm just trying to think of. Actually, snakes kind of freak me out. Yeah, I used to like them as a kid. They, but then when they start wrapping around you, the more you know about them and how easy it is for them to just choke you to death, Mm -hmm. the scarier they are and more intimidating. I think reptiles are hard to read. Uh, some people have a knack for it. Mm-hmm. Me personally, nope. I have no idea. I just always feel like I could be in danger of getting, I don't know, squeezed to death any moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's no ability to kind of know what they're thinking nope, or feeling. Not with reptiles for me. Um, That's so interesting. Yeah. 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 I can't read them. They're so cold and detached. And it's all about what they want. But a cat also, I feel now that I'm adult. They're okay. I'll pet them, but yeah. I don't trust them very much. I'm more of a dog person. Yeah, no, I agree. I saw two cats the other day sharing a cigarette outside of my building. And I, <laughs> a let's just, cigarette. Let's nice. just say I knew they were up to no good. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um. And yeah, thank you. I, I think I've just like I was thinking about this last night. I was like, when I was young, one of my favorite, the one of the first people I ever remember meeting was this kid named Doug Huval that I went to school with, and I was in second grade. And he had a stutter. And it was the most fascinating thing like I'd ever heard. Like, because mm. everybody I'd heard talked the same. Like, everybody just talked, you know? Oh, yeah. And so when he suddenly had like this voice that was like, it was, he was like a, like he was like a, like, like an instrument a little more you know it was just (laughs) so it was unique and i was like oh man this is the best and i remember i started impersonating him Mm. and then the teacher at school thought that i was making fun of him right but i wasn't i just wanted i wanted to be like different kind of like he was you know i wanted to be i don't know i just unique yeah yeah, it just seems so unique to me and um so i think then i've always just had like this just this affinity for what it would be like to have something unique like Mm. no vision or or a unique like um you know like uh they have a guy sometimes you see on the internet who doesn't have any arms and legs and he Mm -hmm. like does all these stunts and everything you know so cool this little yeah this kind of little buckety kind of bad boy you know (laughs) so uh, i guess like i was thinking last night i was like i wonder if your imagination is different than mine actually i'm very imaginative i'm a huge fan of horror particularly and was of horror films horror films horror books what music radio dramas that are involved with horror for yeah. example like the white vault uh for instance fast horizon check them out they're awesome are they oh yeah they're uh full and scholar productions actually created. and is that one you're doing voiceover and yes right yes. okay so i i mean i've got to plug these shows because i'm so excited about them no of course and we're going to plug them too <laughs> whenever we uh whenever we bring the we'll do an intro for the show later yep, yep. we'll make sure to plug them but oh thank um, you so so first, let's talk about imagination a little. Yes. Nabu. Sorry about that. That's okay. So there was just a knock at the door. We don't. Uh, I'm not sure who it was, but so Nabu lets you know when she does. She alert barks. She does. And actually, what's funny? What uh, I work at Perkins School for the Blind mm-hmm. at the Perkins Library, and at work, if somebody comes by my office, she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. like she gets all worked up. <laughs> she barks maybe five, six times, but quick. Just to let me know they're there. Can you tell uh, the tone even down to the smallest level in her bark? Like if she's trying to, Mm -hmm. if she's trying to be like alert you or if she's trying to let them know that you're there or like you able to different note like notice different levels of like intonation that she has in her voice yes i am for example if she's startled she'll do a very quick short high-pitched bark Mm. and then if somebody comes by that she doesn't like she'll she'll get up and walk over to them just be like "Mm." You know, just like growl, oh, yeah. and go, boop, 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 get That's out. That's like my mom. My mom used to do that when I bring this kid Wayne over all the time. Just growl. Yeah, yeah, she would. How dare you? Yeah. 
get them out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, dude. And he was a bit of a deviant. Uh, um, but yeah, your imagination, like I was thinking last night, I was like, my imagination is almost kind of limited by, by colors. You mm. know, I wonder if like my imagination got caged up, you know, because it's, it's like limited a little bit by knowing like what a lot of different colors are and how the world is kind of, or how the society we live in is kind of built, you know? Yeah, well, you can you can definitely expand all that, like noticing smells whenever you're somewhere, let's say out and about, walking by shops or something. You, you can smell all the different things coming out of a shop. And sometimes you can even tell where you are based on the smell. Mm. So just starting to notice that in your own life too, uh, Actually, meditation exercises help with that mindfulness mm -hmm. where you, you notice, oh, I'm having this thought or I'm thinking about what I need to do, but I'm just going to let it go and think about, you know, uh, let's see where my thoughts go naturally and what do I notice around me? Like something like a sound of a fan can be soothing, kind of white noise, intermittent, can cause your brain to focus harder on an um a task that you're working on and mm -hmm. that's all mindfulness so doing something like that can help you get to that same level that i'm that i'm mentioning where you're discussing all the five senses and how they implement uh, how they work together to create that multi-sensory picture of where you're at yeah so but in terms of imagination actually my friend and i as teenagers we used to get on the phone and this is when people actually used to talk on the phone instead of texting and instagramming and twi tweeting to each other we would sit on the phone for hours, I kid you not. And sometimes we would do online mud games, you know, where you would, that is like a D&D &D sort of online. Mm -hmm. and Wait, now that's Dungeons and Dragons you're saying. Right, right, okay. yeah, similar And you to can that. play these how, because... So you know how online they have a graphic system and multiplayer um, verse, et cetera. Mm -hmm. This is all done through command line. So you modify it by going in... Um, you bring up like a command line box, kind of mm -hmm. like we used to do with DOS back right. when. Right, HTML where you can enter in code. Mm -hmm. And you you enter textual text commands, like okay. the old text adventures used to be in the 90s on the, the old DOS systems. And you would enter commands, and then a lot of the, the games now, you can insert a sound pack, mm -hmm. which would take the place of some of those longer command line um, prompts. And we can listen to sound effects in 3D space and mm. figure out where we're at. Environments and, and things like that, spells, all of those have sounds related to them. Ah, oh, I see. So by adding in sound packs, um, you're able to get like a, more of an experience Faster. where you can actually enjoy a... Multi-sensory. Like a video game, game. experience kind mm -hmm. of. Now, so with virtual reality kind of looming, does that seem very exciting to like yes. the blind community? Oh yes, uh, Deep End Games actually produced one called uh, Perception. And it's about this main character who's blind and she's gotta go to her grandfather's house, go through it and solve the mystery of what happened to him and how he died. Wow. And it starts off, it's fully voice acted, it's mm -hmm. 3D audio space. And I contacted them, I was like, hey guys, you're <laughs> awesome, like how do I play this? They're just like, oh, uh, it, we we believe it's accessible. Let us know, you know. So I've I've got to get my nephew to help me out here. And what's it called play? again? I'm going to write that down. Perception. Perception. It mm -hmm. sounds really really interesting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The trailers are amazing, and the voice acting is spot on. And so when you're listening to these types of things, I mean, you you get everything from sound, right? I mean, you're not mm -hmm. able to. Yes. And and then you have like some kind of extra. Um, I I believe it's her or. It's like an extra voice that tells you where you where you are and how many meters away from mm -hmm. something you're standing, mm -hmm. and that's a, that would additionally help you navigate. And there are also iOS virtual reality games out there. Mm -hmm. And are you able like so a virtual reality game like for me I would take the head the vid the vid the VR visual headset, set yeah. like the goggles mm -hmm. and put them over my head, my yeah. over my eyes, and then I you know I would have the headphones on i would listen to the experience but i'd also be able to see it for you what is that experience like it's more just sound based it's more sound based where you would have the set of headphones on mm -hmm. and everything would be in binaural audio which is a simulated 3d space 
Oh, wow. Okay, so it's a different type of audio specifically for people that are hearing impaired? They actually make it for anyone um, who who wants to play the game. A lot of these have graphical interfaces built in, so anyone can play them. I see. The goal is just to make it fully accessible for all, mm-hmm. and, which is great because if you have a little bit of vision, you might be able to see the graphic inter- graphical interface as well. I see. There's a YouTube video of a guy that has a lot more vision than I, than I do, I would say. Mm-hmm. He plays a Star Wars virtual reality game and is able to move the the lander around successfully on his own without dying. I see. And he gets super excited about it, obviously. It's and but your imagination like so you have color in your imagination when you're imagining things? Yeah, um I'm losing color perception a little bit. Mm-hmm. So my ability to tell shades apart like blue green for example if they're close or if purple is close to blue sometimes Mm -hmm. it's hard to tell but i do imagine it for what color i have Mm -hmm. that will enter into it and of course it goes into dreams as well so um can your dog tell like if someone is lying i wish you think (laughs) um she can tell if someone is trustworthy or not. It's really? sort of like that saying where you believe kids, you, you can't fool a baby or a dog. Hmm. You know that saying, I'm probably saying it wrong here, but. Oh, that's what we do here. <laughs> but um, she can certainly tell if someone's not trustworthy. Uh, she doesn't like them. She gets a bad vibe and maybe will bark a little bit more if they show up and mm-hmm. doesn't trust them, doesn't really want to go near them, avoids them. We were on the bike path once just walking. Um, I was with a couple of people and there was some guy that was walking down the bike path for some reason, she didn't like him. So she pulled us way over into the grass, went around him and just kind of stopped as he walked by because he was like, oh, hi there. Oh, wow. And so I said, hi. And she just stood there and just didn't want to move until he walked by, just staring at him. And you were able to just kind of feel that vibe from her oh, and yeah. take those cues 100%. Yep, because she was standing very still and kind of tense. Right. And you trust yeah. her wholeheartedly. Like there's, a, there's no, there's no like, unless it probably comes to a treat, I'm guessing, there is no <laughs> misconception about what her intentions are. Yeah. it's She's pretty spot on, trustworthy dog. Um it's pretty and, cool, huh? Yeah. My first service dog was like that too. But this one is a lot more protective of me. Mm-hmm. Not to the point where she'll bite or attack. I do think if I was being mugged or someone was, was trying to attack me in some way, she would step in and try to bite them at that point because she, she's protective. But now, she wouldn't just bite somebody out right. of nowhere. Now, do you feel like you said you like horror films? Yes. Is there a, to me, it feels like. Uh, you're already like in the dark a lot like i would feel (laughs) i felt like it would be double scary hey you want to you want to promote me for in the dark i'm (laughs) happy to be on that show i had to say that is that a show (laughs) it's a show it's a blind protagonist on the cw oh wow i didn't even know that i haven't seen that show (laughs) that was a pun so okay "Ah, perfect (laughs) no i know that yeah i know you do voiceover work and i want to i want to learn more about the um about the characters you play in those um but yeah i'm just curious i guess uh, like you know what um like what's what why the horror genre do you feel like i'm wondering just is there any correlation between what your daily kind of existence or experience with the world is and if if it, you think it, it ties into liking that genre um that's a good question i think it ties into i love adrenaline rush and just that whole fight or flight response where but isn't it every i feel like everything would be in a general in rush to you like a b it's true um when you're crossing a street if a car just comes <laughs> out of nowhere you're like oh my god i'm gonna die that's so crazy <laughs> so, <laughs> but in this case you're able to like experience you're every it. Friggin', like every 10 minutes is the x games i feel like for you <laughs> it can be depending on where you're at <laughs> yeah. uh whether or not you're getting you know assistance or if you know where you are like when you're lost oh my god that's anxiety provoking yeah especially at night <sighs> And, and what if no your dog around. wasn't there? What if uh, uh, Nabu wasn't there? Yeah, that would be harder. I'd have to figure it out with my cane, and it would be a lot slower of a process. I'd have to slowly map out my surroundings and find, let's say, the nearest street crossing and then the nearest building and ask for help. Like, just go in. I've done that before. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, like Lyft, Uber. 
drivers, a lot of drivers don't speak the language very well. Mm-hmm. They don't understand uh, a lot. Like, so, what do you mean, the language of sight or the language English. of just English? Yeah, English, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of dudes. And they don't oh, speak yeah. any language, a nope. couple of them. <laughs> I know, a, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I've had some guys that don't speak anything, dude. <laughs> they just, you pick a letter of the alphabet out of a hat. They have no idea what you're talking about. Exactly. They can't read signs. <laughs> yeah, they can't read anything. Yeah, I know. I know. It's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I went to the Chelmsford Center for the Arts once. And they dropped me off. Like, the guy had no idea. He's like, building? Building? I'm like, sir, I need to go to the Chelmsford Center for the Arts. Here's where it is. Like, this is what it looks like. There's a sign right outside. It's huge. You can't miss it. I'll tell you. If I can see it, I'll tell you. He's like, a building? Oh, no building. No no building. I'm like, yeah, obviously. I can tell as well that there's no building. We're in a parking lot. Like, where? Come on. Yeah, <laughs> Let's drive around the parking lot. Let's find it. No building. I'm like, all right. See you later. <laughs> You never see you later. (laughs) You're getting a three star rating. (laughs) Sorry, buddy. (laughs) Um, Do you find that? um, Do you find that? So, more about that horror genre. Sorry, let me think because I'm not that good of a thinker. But more about the horror genre. So, is it because, yeah, when you said that, like crossing a street, I can't even imagine not being able to see and crossing a street. Right on red is. Not a fun thing, and that but it would just be time. so scary. Like, what you don't know if the guy over to your left is like not paying attention or he's oh, coming sure. in. And a lot of people are on their phones, so it's a more of a risk for anyone crossing. Now, does can you feel that vibe if somebody's on their phone? Does I that wish. feel like a different vibe than somebody just sitting there? Like, say if I'm just sitting here. Yeah, unfortunately, not. I can't. I can't tell that at all. Uh, it just looks like they're sitting waiting to. Uh, proceed at the next cycle. Right. Usually, well, what does it feel like? Can you get a feeling from it? That was what I'm saying. Uh, not really. Like I can't tell unless the person kind of pulls forward and then stops and mm-hmm. then pulls forward. Then I can tell that they're they're distracted. Okay. But I don't really get any intuitive feelings from it. Mainly, what my intuition works on for me or works well with me is is uh, let's say a friend wants to go on a job interview and they tell me, "Oh, I'm going on a job interview at, at noon. What do you think? Am I going to do well?" And I'll think, okay, so I'll I'll put what I know about this person's style as well as the person they're going to see and what their history with this person was, what they told me their previous interaction was, and then my gut instinct, and I'll kind of come up with an intuitive, I think you'll do great, or I'm not really sure this is going to work out, but this will lead to other opportunities for you. And it usually turns out to be that way. Do you feel like more of a computer than a person sometimes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's That's actually very accurate. Um, because social interaction can be nerve wracking. I have a little bit of social anxiety mm. in certain situations. Yeah, and I Me like too. the pre-programmed like five questions when you start a conversation. How are you? You know, what do you do? Um, you know, where do you live? Those those five like small talk questions that because always... it helps give you more of a world, a little bit of a world to start with. Mm-hmm. Mm. And like little like yeah, it helps give you some information. It helps give yeah. you. Yeah, it does. But it's also, as a person who can't make eye contact, it is very difficult if you're in a group to find when is a good time to jump into the conversation oh, yeah. and add something to it. Oh, it's like being stoned then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of. I think because, yeah, I've been high sometimes and I'm standing there and then yeah. I don't know when to jump in and then everybody leaves, you know. You're like, where'd you go? Yeah, and you're like, hey, dude. <laughs> I know. We asked you if you wanted a ride, but you Oh, you did? What was this? I don't yeah. remember this. Um, do you feel like... A damsel in distress. Sometimes I feel like if I saw, like, if there's a woman walking around who's who's blind, Mm -hmm. then I'm. I feel like is she like a sitting, like, not a sitting duck, but is she, um, is she like a sitting, like, do you feel like a potential victim possibly ever? Uh, so I did more so when I was at, like, I went to school at Simmons for undergrad, and and what is that? Oh, that's a, sorry, that's a school in Boston. It's it's an all-girls school. Okay. But in that area, like the Fenway area of Boston, as you know, the Red Sox play there. It's like oh, a lot yeah. of events, a lot of drunk people at night. A lot of night. alcoholism. A lot. So oh, it can yeah. be a little unnerving. Like I've had people just go, <laughs> you know, when I'm walking by or something. Yeah. Or like, hey, baby, you want to like, you want to you wanna wanna come over and talk to me or whatever? I'm just like, <laughs> no. Uh, so I had my service dog that made me feel a lot better. Right. And then I took self-defense and I took Kempo karate. So it's like, I know the basics. I know how to 
shove my fingers into somebody's eye sockets, like that will stop them right away. Or, you know, you shove your fingers up their nostrils oh, and yeah. you just go boom oh, or into yeah. their neck, into their Adam's apple if they're a guy, if you can reach them. Oh, so yeah. So you just, you just know the basic defensive strategies just and it boom, really gives you a lot of confidence. Like you feel better traveling at night in that area. But other than that, unless- But do you feel like a potential, like because you have your sight impaired, right? And I'm yeah. gonna keep using different terms because I don't know what I'm no, talking about. No, you're good. About. But do you, <laughs> um, do you feel like my intentions are good? I mean, yeah, I don't, uh, sometimes I get vibes from people where I feel like they may not have great intentions and I'll just cut the conversation short and move on. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want you to feel like that from me. Do you feel like no, that no, from no. me? Okay, good. No, not at yeah. all. <laughs> no, I know that you, you know, like I know you do voice acting. I know you do podcasting mm -hmm. uh, or in that universe. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, yeah, I just, I never got to spend time with someone that couldn't see, you know, so I've just always been curious. No, no question is a bad question. You know, everything is is fine. Like I don't get offended or anything. I'm happy to try to give you a slice into into what it's like. Yeah. Although every person who is blind has a different perspective on their life depending on when where they're at. Really? Oh yes. Now when you say where they're at, do you mean where they're at in what? So in terms of like how long they've been blind, when they lost their vision, whether or not they have some usable vision, mm -hmm. or if they were born with no vision. Mm -hmm. People who are born with no vision, their concept development is, depending on who taught them and what school system they were at, they may or may not have concepts of different things, like, ah. like what certain animals look like. For example, um, and so where you on that scale, you have some concept, some concepts, yeah. There are some things like, for example, when I read in books where it says, so and so's eyes sparkled with amusement, mm -hmm. I'm like, what does that mean? How did they sparkle? Does it like, right. did they have more tears in their eyes because they were so amused? And so the light was catching off of the tears and mm -hmm. glistening on their eyes. But I have actually. Like one time I was holding my, my niece when she was a baby mm -hmm. and I was looking at her eyes and I could see the sparkle. It was like the first time I could see that. Mm -hmm. It was so cool. Oh yeah, babies have more of it. Yeah. I think to me that thing is like, it's like a light behind somebody's eyes hmm. that's like not like a moisture thing. To me, this is my yeah. perception of it. Yeah. And it's, it's like something of like peacefulness or comfort. Oh. So I think you see that or... Like excitement can sometimes like flare it up in people. Mm -hmm. In younger people, I think excitement flares it up. In older people, I think sentiment or like um, nostalgia. Nostalgia, that's a great one. Joy, mm -hmm. like things like that really kind happiness. of. Yes, nice. happiness. Things that kind of mold like or, or fluff your emotion. Oh, like that's... positively, I think those are things that would add like a sparkle to somebody's eye. Maybe. Oh, that's sweet. You know? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just like now. What about like um, like would do you close your eyes ever, or are you just like there's no point in it? Oh well, because I have some vision. Yeah, I do. I close my eyes like when I'm gonna go to sleep, or let's say uh, sometimes I'll be light sensitive. So. If I don't have my sunglasses and it's super bright out, mm -hmm. I'm on the beach and the sun is glaring off the sand, throwing up lights. Oh, it's yeah, just I hate agonizing. That. Ugh. So I close my eyes. So what does that feel like for you? That just feels like an intense, it's just uh, an intense, like what, whiteness kind of color? It kind of, yeah. Kind of like, well, because I mean, I can see uh, general colors. So let's say I'm looking at the yellow sand and it's just a lot of light. It kind of washes everything out mm -hmm. and it's, unless I'm squinting really hard and my eyes start tearing, I'm unable to really make a lot of other things out um, right. for long before my eyes start to water. So at that point, closing them is, is the best, but it is similar to just this glaring white field of light. Mm. And then I close them and it's red because you know, that's when you close your eyes, that's what you see if you, there's, it's bright. Mm. And now what if I put like a woman like 50 feet away from you, okay? Mm -hmm. And I put your mother 50 feet away from you, right? Yeah. Do you think you would know the difference between the two of them? If they talked, yes. If they didn't say anything at all? So if I could see- Like can see... you feel that you're, I'm just trying to get an idea if, if this makes any sense. Can you feel like that your mother is close? Like, a, you know what I'm saying kind of? Through the feeling wise, no. Um, because like I don't have any extra 
sort of intuitive uh, sense of, of who is who unless I have some additional cues. Okay. So it would depend on the contrast, the lighting, like mm -hmm. if it was, it was decently lit but no glare. Let's say like an overcast day, cloudy day, and somebody was 50 feet, but the background was not complex. So I wouldn't get confused by trees or houses in the uh, background. Ah, so you have to be very specific. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very, so just like just like nothing almost. Right. Yeah. So you like let's say they were standing on the beach, right? They were right. standing on sand, and there was nothing else to clutter the background. I would be able to see them, but then if I could preview whose clothing or outfits looked like what, and if they had very contrasting compared to each other outfits, I'd be able to tell. Okay, that's my mom standing on the left, and this is mystery person number one on the right. You mm. know. Because they're wearing a white shirt on the right. My mom's wearing a red shirt. Right. Right. Like, so the, the little more clues you have. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of clues. A lot huh? of puzzle pieces. So the detective analogy earlier was good. So it's a lot of clues when you can't see. Mm -hmm. A lot of cues and things you put together. Do you find that, um, or do you get any sense that certain cultures are friendlier than others? Oh, certainly. Like in the UK and mm -hmm. here in the US and Germany, they're very inclusive mm. of people with disabilities in general. Mm -hmm. And the UK in particular has made a lot of wonderful strides, like audio description captioning, for example. Wow. They audio describe like double the amount that we do and that we're mandated to Oh, they're to chatty. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are chatty. Yeah. You know, especially if they've been drinking. <laughs> but no, I'm making a joke they're here. They're friendly. So, so they have, so you're saying that the UK really is kind of the leader in that sort of world? I would say the UK, Germany, um, you know, They've done a lot to to include people, and even Switzerland, I, I would say. And then the U.S., definitely. Um, I hope it continues to go that way. And uh, other countries in, in Europe, like, for example, where I'm from, Serbia, they mm -hmm. are not as inclusive. They're a little behind the times. Yeah. But they're getting there. Uh, I know Perkins is working with them through Perkins International to try to teach teachers from there how to better instruct their students and include them, get them prepared for mainstream work. Mm. And then in India, for example, they're, they're working hard to get some of the, the I guess, poorer families, uh, communities, to include people with disabilities in mm. the workforce. Mm. So it's getting there. It's just our the first world countries have to help the third world. Mm. To get there, well, which, and the problem is also how we can't get half the first world people to freaking get a job no or to go to work. Jeepers. Yeah, we need to help our own people. <laughs> it must be. Do you can you tell like when you get a vibe when you're around someone who can see who has all the faculties and they're like, oh, they're not even trying. Yeah, Oops, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, yes, definitely have had that experience before where. People complain that they can't find a job, but they're not really trying. <laughs> oh, like they're just collecting yeah. the unemployment, you know? And yeah, you're like, I can't find it. Yeah, I can't find I'm it. I'm like, you know, I'll take any job here at this point. <laughs> like any additional side gig would be welcome. But you're not, <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> if you aren't sure, then you are going to be. Because the truth is that this past weekend is brought to you by Skillshare. If if you if you if you're somebody and you're walking around and you're like, dang, wish I had some skills, well get some. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. They have twenty five thousand different types of classes, design, business, more. You'll discover countless ways to fuel your curiosity, creativity. Get get excited. You you have a think find a passion in your head. Look inside of your head right now. What's your passion? And go up, go look for it on Skillshare. They have classes in social media marketing, mobile photography, creative writing, illustration. This is, this is, it's like a new college. Get the skills you want, apply them to your world. You wanna learn filmmaking? Try low budget filmmaking, dude. You know how many shite movies are out there? You could make one. Tips and tricks for an indie look. It's one of the most popular courses. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for our listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash T-H-E-O-V-O-N to start your two months now. 
That's Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. And now let's get back to this beautiful blind episode. Um, you mentioned earlier that you have a boyfriend. Is it? Is it? I would imagine that it's. Let me think about what I think when. Um, he's also visually impaired as well. He is. Yes. Well, he's missing out. I'll tell you that. <laughs> You're a beautiful young lady. Thank you. That's mm-hmm. appreciate And I'm not that. trying to. Hit, I mean. I'm always trying to hit on everybody a little bit, but <laughs> at the same time, I'm I would never be disrespectful to your boyfriend. Um, oh no, no, no worries. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll say this for myself, especially when I was young, I would probably be scared if someone was blind. You know, uncomfortable. I, would be, I get it. Yeah, and I yeah. don't mean this in a negative way. I'm no. just trying to be earnest. I would feel. No, yeah, I, yeah. I was I, probably scared. I was probably, you know, I didn't know what to do. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. If I go engage with them am i gonna mess am i gonna mess things up or something like whatever's going on in their world like am i going to hey you're not alone a lot of people don't know how to approach yeah the blindness community um i think on our end what Mm -hmm. we could do better is communicate what what we're thinking and how we're feeling because our body language is a lot less like A lot Uh, of us sit still or don't move a lot because we don't have the concept of, you know, like, for example, Italians, like they talk with their hands or moving around like this and whatever. For us, we don't really have that as a natural part of our lives. Like we don't right gesticulate. Gesticulate. Yeah, that's good. And uh, that's off putting to others who, who have that as part of their or they use they get cues from others, how they're feeling through the body language. A hundred percent. Yeah, you get a lot of that. Yeah, you get clues mm-hmm. from just from somebody's activity. If they're, yeah, just there, you can get a lot of, a lot more clues. Yeah, I didn't realize yeah. how many clues it is. Oh, yeah. So it would be good on our part to communicate, oh, I'm not upset. I'm just, you know, I'm uh, thinking or like, I know my face probably looks like I'm pissed off right now, <laughs> just, but I'm just, yeah. I'm spacing out yeah. or I'm, I'm not really, I'm thinking about what I have to do to, at work tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not pissed at you <laughs> because sometimes our facial expressions don't match how we, how we're feeling or what we're thinking. Wow. And that can be off-putting to people. Also, I had to be told this because I used to like sit like this where mm-hmm. my hands were across my stomach, crossed over myself. And that looks like you Might are closing- pregnant. Or that, yeah. I guess. <laughs> no thanks, not Where for a couple I'm from, years. I'm it's pregnant. Good. Yeah, these <laughs> girls is usually about thirteen years old. So, oh man, different times. Uh, but um, but to you, that see, people, would, what clue is that given off to people? That I'm closed off and not welcoming interaction. Ah, uh, yeah. So you have to sit very open. Like your arms have to be out to your sides. Mm-hmm. You know, I've actually read a bunch of stuff on body language just to try to understand the concept of it. Mm. Um, and then. A lot of people also, when they shake someone's hand, if they're blind, like they're just like, oh God, how am I going to do this? So what I do as a person who's blind is I'll, I'll put my hand out first and I'll be like, oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Toward the middle of my body because, you know, you don't want to put it way out to the side. That just kind of looks weird. Mm-hmm. And you're exuding friendliness by f- taking the cue first and taking the, the awkwardness out of the situation. Mm. So it's just, we, we have to educate ourselves on body language and make it more comfortable. I love how you have just an ability. I mean, it's and this is just such a neat gift that you see that you probably I think as a person to seem to have is to recognize your part in things. Like, mm-hmm. you know, instead of saying like, oh, everybody needs to do this or people could do this, it's like, oh, the blind community or as a person that's sight impaired, we could do this. These are things. It's like, yeah, we right. all we all can soft skills. Yes. But we all can always help our own situation, even if we think something else is like really impairing us. Yeah. There's always like our own part in it. Kill them with kindness. That's the way to do it. Yeah. If you can. If you're grumpy that day, just don't talk. Yeah. Or just kill them, huh? <laughs> just, just, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> right, look, you got me into the horror film, so you're the one yes. who's making me think of the dark arts in here. Take that axe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Take the hatchet. God. <laughs> it must be, so, I mean, do you, could, if you, if you're blind, do you feel like everybody could be a killer? Hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> like there's so much more opportunity for you to think there are people that are killers. Like I can see people. I'm like, oh, they're not killers, you know? Yeah. But for you, I feel like you could always be like 
fantasize and there's somebody in the distance with like a bow and arrow or something unique. You oh, know? yeah. Sometimes you can freak yourself out that way. Wow. <laughs> like, oh, my God, a bunch of zombies are going to break into this car <laughs> yeah. and they're going to eat me. <laughs> yeah, like your imagination must be able. Oh, yeah. Does your Always. imagination, is it very active? It's very active. Wow. Yeah. Like if I watch a horror film, like, for example, I just saw The Haunted, um, mm -hmm. the, the series on Netflix. Have you seen it? No, I have not. Oh, it's scary. It is? <laughs> yes, a little too real. <laughs> and so horror films, I just thought of this, because they have so many more sound cues. They do. They do. And the sound design is amazing. Yeah. Because it's, uh, yeah, it's it's trying to build up an emotion, whereas a lot of other things aren't mm -hmm. really doing that. They're just kind of telling True. a story like point blank. Yeah. Like oh, Bird wow. Box, for example, with Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Super amazing sound design with the sound with the the minute sounds that you would hear in your environment. Mm -hmm. Only they're exaggerated enough just so, so that anyone can notice them. Mm. And they're not as crazy with the jump scares, which gets old. Yeah, and they, I agree. Yeah, horror films kind of they got they got lazy really. They did. Yeah, like, I miss the old when I was young. They had Jason Voorhees. They had like Friday the Thirteenth oh, and yes. some of those things. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, Michael Myers. I bet that stuff. I bet the mm -hmm. Michael My the Halloweens were really good. Probably the early ones. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty good. I think they could have done. I mean, this is seventies, but yeah. I think they should have made it stereo versus mono, mm. where it's like coming out of just one channel in the center, and then the music is stereo. Yeah, it could have been, but you know, for what it was at the time, it was really good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd love to see. I wonder how interesting it would be if you design the like help design the sound for a horror film. I bet that would be fascinating. That would be awesome. <laughs> Do you feel like we use the the skills because that's such a unique skill that you like a sensory ability to connect with sound at a level that I couldn't do. Yeah. You know, because your your senses in that space are more acute. I wouldn't want to make it 5.1 surround like most movies are anyway, mm -hmm. where it surrounds you like the You wouldn't want to? I would. I would, would want to. Yes. And I, I would want to make the So, you know how when people are on camera, the the actors, unlike mm -hmm. audio drama, they are in the center, unless they're coming on to set from another room, that's when you would hear them off to the side. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, they're coming from the center. So both channels directly boom in front of you mm. because the camera's focusing on them. Mm -hmm. What I would want to do is create like a virtual reality horror movie where you walk through like a fly on the wall and you get to hear these things happening and the people move around you in space, mm -hmm. like 5.1 surround sound, mm. because that would make it more real, especially if things were happening to you. And if you can make it like a 4D sensory experience where not only do you have the movie and the, the headphones around everything's happening around you, but you would smell things uh, like blood, for example. Yeah. Or um, maybe you'd have props to use along with the movie. Like like let's say you have to kill the killer. Mm -hmm. So you'd be given a prop gun. Oh wow. Something like that would be amazing. You could actually feel and you and mm -hmm. have. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's that would draw so many audiences, I think. Just maybe you're talking like five D. I mean maybe you're yeah. going you need another D. Go all out. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. it's just so yeah it's like well i wonder do now do people does hollywood come and tap into the blind community to learn more about sound or are there groups that do that it seems like it would be almost like a gold mine or they would that you know they would go to a, a mine that has the value in it is there any like connection to my knowledge no but i do know that they have experts and consultants that they go to for example, for the movie Bird Box, I know they went to a couple of people who are blind to inquire about how things were being portrayed, like Braille, for example, uh. signage and things. I'm not sure on the sound design if they went to someone who's blind, but I am aware of a th uh, BBC, uh, the BBC does like 3D audio radio dramas for their, for their um programming mm -hmm. and they did employ someone who's totally blind as a sound designer that that is one example that i can think of mm. and i know there are sound designers out there i just don't know if hollywood collaborates but that would be great that's yeah. a great idea yeah because you guys are like hawks almost do you feel like a bird is there an animal you feel like a little that you kind of relate to a little bit more like is there an animal you feel in the world and you're like oh that animal has a very similar experience maybe to mine a little bit has that ever happened? And there hmm. was, it, it can be a no. I'm just, 
I'm just trying to wonder. Besides an AI, I say, <laughs> I would say maybe maybe What's a an dog, AI? What is like it? an artificial intelligence, a computer, you know. Oh, like I see. A machine, you know, cyborg. Because you feel a, a lot of times things are more like a machine almost. Mm -hmm. Like you have to get clues. Yeah. Like you get information and then you're able to build more of a world, which exactly. is the same way people do programming. Kind yes. Of. And you can reprogram your brain. So, for example, like habits you don't like, mm -hmm. you can reprogram yourself to not like those habits that you loved. What now you must have a much more because you're right there at the atomic. I bet, but I bet you have more of an access to the atomic level of that than I would because I'm out here in this comfort zone, you know, just a damn sugar lizard out here. <laughs> whereas you're down there working with the building blocks more inside of your senses sometimes. So is it easy for you to to do that to like reprogram yourself? I'm I'm just fascinated with psychology as a person, and I think that's just more of my my own interest than um, my, my ability to work with it. But if you believe something, it's it's funny how the more you believe something, the more it is. So if you put mm. something out there into the universe and say, oh, I want this to be this way, it will. Or if you have a negative a sense of something, that the self-fulfilling prophecy will happen as yeah. well, which is unfortunate. That's, But it seems like you get what you put out there. So in terms of my ability to improve uh, my programming and, and adjust, it's I have to constantly believe that it will work. Mm. If I stop believing it's gonna work or I give up or I get lazy, it's not gonna work. It's just gonna go back to where it was. Is it, it would feel like it would be easier for you to give up because you don't, it just feels like it would be easier. Does it feel like that to you ever, or you don't know um, what I'm talking about? Is it, I, I think do you understand what I'm saying, kind of? I do. Like the with depression, with getting down or Yeah, anxious. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, it certainly can. Like in my early 20s through my mid-20s, it was a, a factor in my life as well as high school because I had a lot of challenges with math, getting through math. I was, um, just to quickly mention, I was mainstream, so I went to public school. Mm -hmm. oh, and God. keeping up with calculus or pre-calc trig all that yeah when the teacher was understanding and helpful it was it was okay i was able to work with them the later the more advanced the concepts got the less time the general ed teachers had to work with me on it after school before school etc and i would fall behind sometimes my grades would drop and i was huge into having good grades yeah i didn't want to fail out or not pass the MCAS or, you know, even the SATs I needed. It was important to get a good score to get go to a good school. Wow. And so I pushed myself and wasn't always succeeding in math and felt like, okay, what am I going to do? You know, I got really depressed. And also the fact that it was harder to make friends was making it yeah, that only adds to it worse but when i got a dog man it was so much easier to make friends people love dogs oh yeah and as long as you're putting the attention on the dog and not yourself to begin with mm -hmm. people feel a lot more comfortable mm. so i use that as my kind of helpful strategy and working through depression i i have a couple of really good friends mm -hmm. who were going through similar times we helped each other out we were there for each other and it's important to recognize when you're down let yourself be down, and then find a way to pull yourself out. Mine was creativity, just being as creative as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see that even in your work. I mean, it seems like you really go beyond what people would, what an everyday person would expect of a blind person. Like you kind of want to kind of change the norm a little bit. Yeah, technology um, helps us level the playing field. Yeah, it's interesting because you work, and now in voiceover, you are a character actress, right? Yes, yeah, I do a lot of... Um, accents and different characters put myself into them yeah one of the best pieces of advice i ever came across with acting is i don't know if you agree with this since you, you're an actor yourself and stand-up comedian um i found that when they say that when you put yourself into whatever character you're playing whether or not you're dressing it up with an accent or not if you put your own truth into it it is what they're looking for mm. Just heard that today from Gianni, actually. Who oh, is, really? <laughs> yeah, he's actually our actor on set. Uh, who ah. here is Gianni, and he's uh, yay. He was just in a film, and um, and yeah, he was just helping me with some lines earlier, and he literally said that like a half hour before he got here. So Congrats! It's, it's funny, nice. Yeah. It's a small uh, so yeah, it's a small circle of truth right here. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So is that um, and how did you get into that? Did you? 
stumbled into it. Really? Yeah, yes. Thank you, Stephen King. <laughs> um, I went to my local library to pick out, I used to get books on tape. Oh, yeah. All the time. Those are good. Oh, yeah. And we used to get movies at the library. You remember that? Or oh, we? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to borrow those too. Yeah. Force my family to watch all these horror films that they hated. <laughs> it's so dark arts. Dude, I would be so scared if I had a blind child who brought home horror films all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to piss me off. <laughs> I bet they would. Do you, yeah. Would your family ever, did, they, did your family ever get because here's another thing and now you're making me think some people would be scared of blind people oh oh my god <laughs> yeah like, like not in a movie. way yeah but like in a way yeah like in a way where like like maybe you're actually just pretending and you're working for the other side or something you know? oh yeah like you're, you're actually not agent. blind or something yeah <laughs> yeah like what if they're just you know see they would make really good russian spies right yeah <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm uh, not. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But I could see, especially at young ages, people being very, I guess, like, it must be, some people must, you must be able to just see a clear line in people. Like, some people are just so empathetic, probably, and so, like, did you mm -hmm. see a lot of that growing up, or do you see a lot of that more of as an adult? Um, That's, let's see. So... As a kid, I did notice that the teachers around me did try their best to accommodate. A lot of them just weren't sure what I needed. I was a dual learner, so I used large print on a video magnifier mm -hmm. and braille. And so they were always like, uh, so you use print, <laughs> yeah. but uh, how are we supposed to, what do you What do you exactly need here? Yeah. <laughs> they were so confused. That, yeah. <laughs> so, so they were like empathetic to a point, but they were also stressed out because they're like, oh God, we have like 30 kids and we have what to accommodate this blind yeah. kid. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Um, but the kids at that age, the younger, the better they were. They were more accepting. But then middle school, high school, they were just like, see you later. Yeah. You know, but uh, in college as an adult, I found a mixture of both where people were really mature and cool about it and interested to know and it helped that i went to a liberal school as well but yeah simmons you said right? simmons yeah now a lot of pervy dudes just trying to bang a blind gal or what honestly <laughs> well there's a lot of that too i could um, imagine yeah because there's a lot of guys you know kind of like different types of styles of stuff you know mm -hmm. and i just wonder if if that did you get some of that i did i got some of that kind of thing where people were trying to flirt with me but a lot of the time i didn't pick up on it because i'm like who would want to flirt with me right like you know i guess my confidence was not as 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 uh solid at that point so i was just like nobody likes me why would anybody want to talk to me oh man that must have been such a tough feeling huh yeah it was kind of it contributed to the depression for a bit there mm -hmm. but that happens all teenagers sort of go through that whole angsty period in their lives where they're so like true my life sucks everyone hates me nobody understands me why am i even here yeah <laughs> but i didn't pick up on it like friends would tell me oh so-and-so is totally hitting on you i'd be like R really <laughs> Wh how do you get that where do you get that from <laughs> well the comments and whatever they were staring at you i'm like really okay <laughs> That's that's cool. Uh, not interested, but that's cool. <laughs> and in college, would you get some more pervy type of dudes? I could see a guy just being like, hey, or even a guy not pervy, just very honest, like, hey, I've I, I've always wanted to make love to a blind woman. Is this something you'd be interested in? You know? Yeah, um, I I got like when I did the online dating thing for a bit mm -hmm. and put on my profile because I was sick of dealing with people that found out that I was blind and then were like, see you later, just oh, ghosted. Yeah. So I was like, no, I'm yeah, done with this BS right. crap. Like, I'm just going to post right here that I'm visually impaired. If you don't like it, like, don't even bother. Blind texting. AF. That's what I'd put on there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> blind ever after. <laughs> yeah. Oh, blind as fuck, you know? <laughs> blind as fuck. Nice. Yeah. Just to be, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? Great. Like, might as well also be progressive. You know what I'm right? saying? Like, not right? only am I blind, dude, but I'm so fucking blind. You know? Exactly. You know? and, it's and like John Cena. Like, you can't see me, you know? <laughs> blind as fuck until I drink, yeah. right? <laughs> So, um, so, I would you have, have guys that. that came in like that? Oh, so, so you dated online, and so then you just put blind. I did. Yeah, and, and I was did. that easier? It was honestly. People just knew, and they weren't like all weird. Yeah. About it when they found out. I mean, I met up with a couple of them, and then was just like, yeah, no, I'm good. You know. Yeah, that's not. basically. I think that is online dating for everyone. 
think you described mm. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's everybody's experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of time spent, you meet up and then, eh. Yeah, you're just like, interesting. Uh, I met a mathematician one time mm -hmm. and he talked about math the entire time. I'm like, dude, you do realize I hate math, right? I really hate math. <laughs> yeah. It's like, let's just talk about random stuff and then go our separate ways because I'm never going to contact you again. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, man, I wish I was blind and deaf right <laughs> Seriously, now. Seriously, right now? Because this guy's the worst. <laughs> that, that would be great. <laughs> well, look, that's how I feel. Like, sometimes I'm like, gosh, I wish. Sometimes I wish, you know what's crazy is? I wish, <laughs> and I guess it's a selfish thing to say to somebody that can't, that has, that's sight impaired, but that sometimes I wish I just could shut down some of the sensory yeah. overload. Well, sometimes see, if you're a computer, you can just go visual or ocular sensors off and just turn it off for yeah. the moment. <laughs> that would be great. But I'm waiting for the days when not only the singularity happens, but we're able to get a chip implanted that can't be hacked. Apple, mm -hmm. you listening? I know, they're you listening. Know? <laughs> that way we can turn off senses we don't want for the time being. Oh, wow. You that think that, be could cool. be that could be plausible? But it certainly makes sense, huh? Self-driving cars are a thing, so I, I don't see why not. With uh, This could help a lot of people out. Do you feel sometimes like you have more of an intuitiveness to, I don't even know what, but maybe to, how people are feeling sometimes. Yeah. Like are there, are there intuitions that you, that you just, if you had to just trust your own, trust your own instincts for something, are there things that you, what can you do better than people that can see that? And maybe they could Ooh, do it. Sounds like a job interview. They could do, they did, they, <laughs> they may be able to do it better, but they're not able to, recognize it because they don't live in the same space that you do like is there yeah i i know what you mean um and not even in a braggadocious way but what do you feel like you have more of an insight into or more of a ability to do than people that are almost overwhelmed with sight or just that are that have that have to see all the time yeah i would say focusing on one task in our technology driven add age it's impossible for people to focus on anything longer than three seconds. Mm -hmm. We're kind of like Dory the goldfish, right? Oh, yeah. So from Finding Nemo, she's her memory's like oh, a goldfish. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember her. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> Comic, comedian reference, right? But um, we, we tend to get distracted very easily to different things and get bored quick. I would say that if I'm interested in something, I can focus on it until mm. I'm done with that. So whether it is a particular song or a particular movie, I like to... I really enjoy personally art, and I don't know if this is related to me being blind or if this is just a personality thing, but I love admiring people's art, mm. whether it is through something auditory art like tap dancing or going to the Nutcracker and listening to an audio described version of the performance. Mm. I can really enjoy all the nuances of, of the work and the time that went into practicing and practicing and completely solidifying their performance wow. to get to that point. Like Broadway plays, for example, I love them. I can pick up on people's voice. Because there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. There's so much going but it's on. it's specific. Hamilton is hard to follow, I could tell you that. But, yeah. But it's- It's hard once to hear about on Twitter too. I feel you. <laughs> <clears throat> but I imagine that it's great. I haven't been, but I'm- It is, it is. But I, I, I uh, the songs are Lion good. King was the last um, Broadway musical that I went to. Nice. But I could imagine that because there's a lot of- A lot of stuff going on. But it's very specific and it's organized to yes. portray something, to portray a show, to portray a story. Yeah, art imitates life. And, and, and so you're able to put that together. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, I love it. It's It's brilliant. And in general, just being able to focus on one thing or another mm -hmm. or pick up on things others don't. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that we, we tend to pick up on other sensory cues that folks didn't, uh, maybe someone who's sighted, who's around us did not because they were focusing on what the person was wearing totally. Mm. You know, like, oh, so-and-so, you know, um, I love their hairstyle or whatever dress. It was this brand and this material. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, their voice expressed this or their footsteps, you know, they sounded kind of less confident because their gait was stumbly or mm. not even or what have you. So, wow, it's so crazy. I feel like you have like such a, I guess just like you have such a, your, the, the ability to hear and be able to interpret things so much. It just feels like such a unique skill, kind of. And anyone can develop it. Like, if 
you know, and, and obviously this is not something I would ever wish upon anyone, but let's say you lost your vision temporarily due to something, mm -hmm. some surgery or what have you. Um, I love surgery too. Yeah. I do. So I could <laughs> you see love it. surgery. That's awesome. I could see it happening. I listened to your last episode where you were discussing, you were thinking about being a doctor. And, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then they brought you in and they just kind of dumped you into it all. That must have been horrifying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. with Tom Segura in? Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, surgery, I mean, watching it is interesting yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Medical I mean, that kind of stuff kind of creeps me out. I mean, I, I think, yeah. you know, if you're in the horror flicks, it might be more your vibe, you know, it might be oh, your yeah. thing. One of my colleagues had a, a major abdominal surgery and he was supposed to go to sleep under local, but as you know, it never works like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And he woke up and he was awake during the whole thing. He was traumatized, poor guy. It was just... Jeepers. Yeah. Awful. Yeah, just kind Can't of imagine. moseying around during your own lobotomy. That sounds... Awful. Yeah. It sounds risky. Yeah. Definitely for your psyche. Yeah, it sounds risky for your psyche. Um, anyone want, can develop those skills of recognizing uh, nuance and sound. But so then we get lazy with our sight. Then we get or because because we have sight, we yes, you you use it as your primary sense. We're sight lazy, right? Like yeah. you take it I all am. in visually, and oh, yeah. you I don't know need yeah, I'm you don't need lazy. the additional you know sound cues because you can see it. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense, I guess. But it also it makes it makes me almost forget about the other senses that I have. Sometimes I get so just used to looking at the picture, you know. But actually, for Halloween, one of my favorite games to play with friends was blindfold everybody mm -hmm. and then stick their hands in bowls of stuff and oh, tell yeah. them, "Oh, this is worms." Yeah. When it's actually spaghetti, yeah, <laughs> or like peel grapes. Oh, you want to hold an eyeball? Yeah, you're like, welcome to my no! world. <laughs> so does everything, does the world feel a little bit haunted since you can't see that much? Like, does everything feel kind of like, is it spooky or does it feel like, kind of like, uh, like you're in sound of music or like, what does it hmm. feel like, I guess? It depends on my frame of mind. Mm. So if I freak myself out in some way by watching something or, I don't know, hearing some story that really sticks with me oh, and yeah. I'm out and about by myself, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to get murdered. This is really mm. creepy. <laughs> and then try to come up, sometimes I'll even try to come up with a story or like, even if I do get startled, I'm like, okay, how did I do that? Like, what did I do to get startled? I'm going to need this for voice acting. Ah. So I'll try to bring it over, bring over those those natural reactions and keep it in mind like how do i react and i'll watch movies and i'll pay attention to the actors how they do it and what makes them a good performer and try to adopt it mm. so i kind of multitask it all but sound of music if i'm really excited about something like i'll tell you when i got this opportunity i was so excited the last couple of days have been like oh my god <laughs> the world is awesome oh like, that's awesome wait. to hear that yeah that's cool. So, yeah, we were really excited too. You know, yeah. we've been trying to find somebody. Um, honestly, we've been trying to find a blind person for a while. Really? Yeah. Oh. So we need more blind people, I think. Hey, you know? I can recommend some more people if you need. <laughs> if we have follow-up questions, I think this has been very interesting. Sweet. Um, we have a couple of video calls that came in as well. Sure. Um, so let's put our headphones, headphones. on. Mm-hmm. And this first one comes from Marco. Hey Theo, Marco from New Zealand. Um, my question is, if there's one thing that she comes across every day that sighted people don't understand that they could change to help her, what would that be? Gang, gang. Gang, gang, Marco. Thank you. That's a good question. Hmm. Tanya, what do you think about that? So should I leave these on or take them? Yeah, off? we'll, we'll leave them on. Yeah. We have a couple more. We have a couple that. Uh, okay. We had a we had a ton actually. But we got yeah. we uh, procured a couple. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing that sighted people could do, in my opinion, that mm -hmm. would help is if they could just let us know what specifically makes them uncomfortable in in situations and what we could do better to to sort of put them at ease mm. that would be helpful for us because then it wouldn't be all on us to try figure out how to how to make people comfortable but then also if we should get better about asking for help i think if we need it but then um i guess sighted people should trust us to know what we need and when we need help and just to, to let them know what it is 
And also don't be afraid to ask questions. That's one of the things a lot of people are uncomfortable with, which I, I get. I mean, I would feel the same way. I don't know much about um, mobility issues. Mm -hmm. So if I were talking to someone with mobility issues, I would feel like, oh, I don't want to offend them. I don't want to ask anything that's rude or ignorant. And it's hard because you're making yourself vulnerable by asking. But my thought is just, just put it out there. If you have any questions, go for it. Yeah. And the other thing is giving directions. I think people need to get way better at that. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. it's over there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's that way. Uh, I'm sorry, where? To my right, to my left? And then I just start pointing in every cardinal direction. <laughs> North, south, east, or west? Which, which direction? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're always like, yeah, go a couple blocks till you uh, smell a, a little bit of skirt steak and then take a left. And you're <laughs> nice. like, what? Nice. You're like, what? <laughs> What is you Which going on around here? <laughs> what are you on? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's interesting because it just sounds like really communication, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like in the times that we're in right now, or like not the times, but as the times that like the media likes to make it feel like we're in yeah. with like social justice warriors and everybody get a, getting offended, um, that people are uh, people I've I've noticed are less feel less comfortable asking questions that can actually be helpful do yes. you notice any of that like people are more worried about offending you than they are about engaging with you all the time it's just easier not to engage than mm. risk offending someone and getting sued right everyone's afraid of getting sued and that must come down tougher in, in even in your community because or not in that in this lawsuit way but just or maybe so but also just that you know you need more communication Yes, I think communication for us is key because we may not be able to tell body language or eye contact whether the person is interested in communicating with us or interacting. So just talking and literally talking everything out, yeah. which doesn't sound intuitive at all because you guys are used to body language and just kind of, hey, I'm pointing at you, hey, yeah. you know, <laughs> gesturing and um, what have you. So that's a big gap right there. And if we all just used our words a lot more instead of memes and, and um, emojis, I, know. I think we'd get more across. <laughs> yeah. We need yeah. to go back to the 90s. I know, huh? <laughs> yeah. Back when there was some real, actually, information. I know. Yeah. I know. I miss that. Yeah, it's interesting. And now we have movies with all texting. Like, the whole movie is texting and Skyping, right? Yeah. It's like, what is that even about? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, that's regular life. I know. Um, what else do we have? Uh, let's take another question that came in. This is actually a Patreon question, so it was uh, written. Patreon. Uh, it comes from uh, Dalton Windham. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, if you had perfect vision for just one day, what would you do during that time? Ooh, that's awesome. Probably, hmm, look at the coral reef or go to go to all the tourist attractions like the the Grand Canyon and... Um, maybe climb a mountain, look at the view. All the things that are visual, I would mm. probably want to want to do. Like all the traditional, and maybe even oh, I'd probably want to be on set for a day and just act without having to worry about not meeting my mark. Mm. I'd, I'd want to incorporate that somewhere in that day. So yeah, you take that worry out of your field, and then you can just be even more free, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do some on-camera work with perfect vision would be awesome. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that is a good one. Uh, anything else, Nick, that came in that you liked? Yeah, this this was a frequently asked one. There, we had two that were really frequent. Um, here's the first one. What up, Theo? What up, Tanya? Gang, gang. Anyway, I was wondering real quick, uh, Tanya, you know, do you have dreams? And when you have dreams, do you see things do you just hear things like i mean i guess seeing things i don't know it might sound ignorant to say that but i, I just i've often wondered what happens when blind people dream do you have like i don't know visions maybe i don't know it's a good question Let me know. man mm -hmm. Thanks. it's interesting yeah what are your dreams like kind of are they yeah so first of all i want to compliment you on the stereo recording you had there that was cool and yeah, I <laughs> I do dream and see things in my dreams. Like I have, I wouldn't say my sight is any better. Some of my friends that have had more sight before tell me that their dreams are a lot more vivid and mm. visual. 
So everyone is different with that. And the more people you ask, the different responses you're going to get. But for me, it's I can see things the same as in real life. But the difference is that my brain kind of knows where everything is. So it's like, I'll know what everything looks like, even though my vision isn't better. I'll know where everything's placed. And it's all already mapped in my head. Ah. So it's like intuitively just knowing where stuff is, which is cool. Also, I'm, I am able to hear things the same way. And I haven't mastered lucid dreaming. I'm trying to. That would be awesome. If I yeah. could just control my dreams, change them up, make, you know, fly. Like I was able to do that once where um, I dreamed that I was in an airplane and the top came off, kind of like in a I car. I had that dream. Really? Yes. Oh, swear cool. to God. And we're going up and, about, up and down some mountains in the top. It was like ah. a convertible airplane. Yeah. And it was like on clouds. They were like cotton candy from the circus. Oh, wow. And it was just kind of floating on clouds and the top of it opened. And then I sort of was like, huh, I wonder what, what would happen if I jumped out yeah. without being scared. Jumped out and I put my hands out to my sides and I was just floating and flying around the plane and along the clouds sitting on them and floating on clouds. It was awesome. Dang. That was the only time I was able to control it, but mm. I'm working on it. Dream journals, <laughs> they're a thing. Yeah, I'm trying to get that uh, wet dreams. Do they have wet dreams in, if you're blind? If you have the, do they have, I don't know, do women even have wet dreams? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I mean, yeah, that's a thing. It it happens once in a while, like when you either don't expect it or if you really like somebody. Yeah. It just like, it comes up or a lot of the times what used to happen for me as a teenager is like it would be like some burning building or something crazy like out of Terminator. Mm -hmm. And then the random guy would show up and be like, do you want to live or you want to die? Let's go. Yeah. You know, and then just go from there. And then I'd wake up like just as I was getting into their car. I was like, what the hell? Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> Why is this happening? <laughs> Why do I have to wake up right now? This yeah. Cool. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. I've had some like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not with the guy, but with a woman, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, what else do we have here? We got uh, one more video question. Uh, let's do. And honestly, this was probably sent in by 12 different people. It's from Andy Ferguson. Yo, what's good, Theo? Uh, this is your boy Andy up in Portland, Oregon. What's up, Andy? Uh, I had a question for Tanja or Tanya. I don't there know you if go. it's a soft <laughs> J. Uh, it's a question that has kept me up many a nights. Just wondering, how do you know when you're done wiping? <laughs> gang, gang. <laughs> okay, so I guess that's a, if you're going to the bathroom, if you're, you know, if you're going to the bathroom, how do you know when you're done wiping your body? That's kind of like the question where people ask when you're in the shower, how do you see to shower, right? Right. It's like you keep your eyes closed and you shower anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where you can just like, you Tell. use a bunch of toilet paper and yeah. then if, if you're still not, you know, if you're still not clean, then you get a boudet set, right? Yeah. And you just use that on your toilet and you're good. And it's actually cleaner and you use less toilet paper. Yeah. But, <laughs> but no, it's like, seriously. Yeah. You just, you just wipe everything a uh, couple times and you make sure it's not uncomfortable. And if it's not, you're good. Yeah. And you move on and. Yeah. Uh, do a couple extra swabs on deck. You exactly. Know? <laughs> I feel just you. Like, just like anybody else would. Dude, yeah. Don't just do one time. I don't yeah, care please who don't. you are. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get stuck in the hair, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You got to <laughs> tighten it up. Um, is, do you feel like, uh, I'm wondering, was sex very scary since you were sight impaired? Like, was that something no. that was, it was just kind of regular? No, it was one of those things where it was like, oh, I'm going to try this now. Let's do it. Yeah. And, you know, it's. It's the the same again with with like anything else. You gotta communicate about everything. Yeah, and just be upfront. And it can be really awkward for sure when you're like it's your first time or whatever, and you're trying to learn your own preferences and things. It can be really awkward, but you you've got to find ways to make things less awkward. So you play games. I don't know. You like maybe you do some role playing down the line just to make things fun you know mm -hmm. keep things fun and you you have if if you're not into it you just got to be honest be like hey dude not today i'm, I'm good yeah yeah just yeah communicate communication <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what's funny the longer that we sit here the, the uh, i just forgot that you were blind for a second nice that's pretty crazy i, uh, I don't know it just like yeah i don't know what for some reason it was just like i don't know just a second ago i just totally forgot about it 
Not yeah. that it matters. Not, not that I was thinking the whole time, oh, you know, Tanya <laughs> can't see or yeah. Tanya's sight impaired, but I just forgot it. Yeah, well, no, it, it's like a tiny person or a tiny part of who I am, and it doesn't doesn't obviously make up anyone's identity. It's just an uh, obstacle or, I mean, you could think of it as an obstacle or just a part of you that you live with and you adapt life to, but it's not really who you are. Like your personality, everyone's personality is blind is different from the others. And although there are similarities in our experiences, like finding shoppers at stores and mm -hmm. getting very vague information on everything <laughs> yeah. or the whole experience where people start helping you and you can tell after five minutes, they're just like, oh, are you going to ask me about one more thing? Please just go away. Yeah, because you need more information, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have a lot of questions. You do, yes. Like you need to know what brand it is, what the size is, you know, if you're looking at shoes, for example, um, what other styles they carry and do they have them in your size? You want to feel everything in the store, which people just get. Kind oh, of, that's pretty wild. People are like, no, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's like a pervert at a, uh, that's like Gianni <laughs> when he goes to one of those bunny ranches. <laughs> nice. You know? He just wants to feel everything in the store. Like a pervert uh, at a sex store. Nick was all the things. You and Nick, Nick was also a premature baby. I don't know if oh. you guys have. No, I didn't know that. So. Preemies. Yeah. <laughs> I was a two pound preemie. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Nick came in. I think he was ready to wrestle. What'd you come in at, Nick? I, I, was, in, I, was, I was pretty heavy. I was in that four to six pound range. Oh, nice. yeah. So. Nice. They called him Big Nick around the incubators, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's. Uh -huh. um, uh, last question I have for you is, is your sight impairment, is it in your eyes or is it in your brain? Oh, that's a good one because cortical visual impairment is now the leading cause of blindness in the U.S. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I have no, <clears throat> I have no idea what you're talking about there. Oh, it, it's a processing issue where that is, that would be classified as a brain um, issue where your brain is just unable to make sense of the images it gets from your eyes. Mm. So, so there is that. That's a leading cause now. But no, mine has nothing to do with the way my brain processes anything. It's it is related to my optic nerve, which connects my eyes to my brain, and a lot of the strands on those have deteriorated. Mm. The more they deteriorate due to glaucoma, the less I'm able to perceive, which is why my field of vision is so low. Like mm. it's it's like looking through a a, a TP tube. You yeah. Know? You just see directly what's in ahead of you. Mm. The funny thing about that is though, when people run across my path, like in front of me or they step in front of me, to me, it looks like they just appeared out of thin air. Like wow. they're not there and then they're there. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> Where'd you come so from? <laughs> every one of your neighbors is like David Blaine kind of. <laughs> yeah. That's so interesting. Um, do you feel like you have a different insight or relationship with like a higher power because you have a, because of your impairment? No, I wouldn't say I'm not really religious. Mm -hmm. So, but even like uh, spiritual, like do you feel like even in your spirit, like do you feel like? Oh, well, that's a good question. I would say because I'm so fascinated with the supernatural in general, I feel like I can pick up if there is residual energy or spirit activity or something. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do as a hobby like in paranormal investigation. Hell yeah, you did. Yeah, it was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, you did, dude. <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, and 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 this will take us into, you want to tell it? Yeah, just uh, before we get out of here, we'd like to hear uh, about your two shows. Yeah. Yeah, specifically, yeah. Yeah. So I'll mention Vast Horizon, okay. uh, which is done by Full and Scholar Productions. Caitlin and Travis are super talented as a team, and mm -hmm. they also created The White Vault, which I encourage you to check out. Mm -hmm. But this is creeping horror. Like, this starts out where it sets up the story and the characters, mm -hmm. and it's this agronomist who wakes up on it's a- It's this what? Agronomist. And what is that? Like, she's a scientist. Uh, she studies plants and such. Okay, so a plant person. Mm-hmm. So she wakes up on a, on a colony ship, and she wakes up alone, like, She's got a tube down her throat, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm dying. Wakes up, the medical computer gives her some basic info, and then she realizes that there are no bodies. No one else is on board. Mm. She's the only one alive on the ship that she knows of. And gets out of the med bay, tries to figure it out. No lights, only emergency auxiliary lights are, are on. Mm -hmm. And she starts making contact with the ship's AI. I get to play the AI, which for me is amazing. I love it because I'm so obsessed with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. 
and I have like an Alexa at home and everything. Oops, sorry guys if I set off your devices here. That's okay. We don't have anything. I mean, she's Gian- talking about the listeners. The listeners, yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, I used to go on the radio and blow a dog whistle all the time. <laughs> nice. And change the whole freaking town, dude. That's great. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, so that sounds pretty fascinating. Somebody mm-hmm. wakes up on a ship and nobody else is there. Yes, exactly. And she needs to survive. Okay. And it tells her story through flashback. You find out how she ended up there and what her mission is. And there are many critical things on the ship that she needs to take care of, including the incubators, you know, the babies and Mm -hmm. the nursery. And it just gets steadily creepier. There will be a couple seasons. And this is all over audio, right? Yep. This is on um, vasthorizon.libsyn.com and thewhitevault.libsyn.com. You can also find it on Himalaya, which is an app. Where, which allows you to stream podcasts. You can listen to and we'll shows. put the links at the um. We'll put the links in the information so people can check them out. Sweet. Sweet. Um, can you feel when like people are looking at you? Sometimes it feels kind of like the hair on the back of my neck stands up. Mm-hmm. You know. It, does that tell you that we have like a unique energy that is like used through our eyes? Like, is there something like? Um, I yeah. Because you think of your eyes just as intakers, but they're really. I think it's that that like your energy is focused on me, so I can tell. Mm. that you're like directly engaged or looking at me directly. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how to put it, except you feel watched. So it's, ah. yeah, it's kind of like when you watch any ghost uh, paranormal investigation show, like Paranormal State, you know, mm-hmm. ghost, uh, yeah, I'm blanking on the, the TAPS team there. Oh, I blanked on everything. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So you kind of, you feel like that sense of someone is there or they're they're watching you. Mm. Man, it sounds, now it just seems so interesting to be blind because now you get to live in like this constant like horror novel where anything could happen. Isn't it great? Everything is kind of hunting you. It's just such a, I'm out here with all this color and all, no, you know, it's just, just kind of milling around with all this freaking, you know, uh, just information that's not really as fascinating sometimes. I mean, Hmm. it is, but I I think what it is, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean it in the sense that it's like I forget about my other senses as much. Like, Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, just being sense lazy. Like, I forget about, like, if I had to close my eyes and sit somewhere for a while and just smell or just hear, Mm -hmm. like, what would I even pick up about the world that I'm in? Try it, try it. It's a lot of fun. They have actually a five senses museum exhibit in um, one of the museums in Denver, actually, they had that recently. It was cool. You know, what be really neat is if you went and sat somewhere, like in a specific place, like in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And you did a thing where you just like you told people, like as an audio tape, you told people like all the sounds that were there, mm-hmm. and so then someone could go sit in the same place and See if they could hear it, yeah. and just notice them. Yeah, because that's a thing. Like I wouldn't even probably notice until someone said, "Hey, do you hear?" You'd be like, oh, wow, that is crazy. I didn't even know what that, you know, I think it could just, you might be able to be like a liaison kind of into like a like a sound Sherpa kind of, you know, where you could take us up in like a, you know, just kind of in a, just recognizing that that sounds going on around us a lot of times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can do that with any kind of, like there are apps that will help you ident- identify bird calls. Mm. That's a big hobby oh, with yeah. a lot of a lot I like of a warbler too. You like them? Yeah. A warbler? Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of cool. Well, it's not like you don't like them really. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'm so-so about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm, I mean, I don't like them that much, but I do like them though, but. Yeah, but um, but there, there are so many ways to do that. I mean, there's an app called Vision Sim, which will simulate different visual conditions like mm. retinopathy, prematurity, diabetic retinopathy, et cetera. And the camera will, you, you look through your camera at objects and you'll see them to the degree you want to impl- Im- to apply that visual impairment. Ah. So you can adjust the slider to 100%, which is total, to 0%. Mm. So try it out. It's free. It's made by the Braille Institute. And it's on um, the i i or the Apple Store. What am I saying? The uh, App Store. Excuse I will me. check it out. Yeah. Uh, I will, and we'll put the link to that as well. Uh, Tanya, we just want to thank you so much for being here and, and joining us today. And um, and yeah, I'm curious to, to check out some of your uh, your voiceover work. Thank you. And uh, and just I don't know, continue to have your voice in my ears sometimes. 
Oh, absolutely. I really appreciate this opportunity. And thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, thank you just for being so candid. And just, um, I really feel like I just, I kind of learned a lot, I feel like. And uh, and I'm grateful for you for being willing to uh, let me learn, you know, and not being judgmental, you know. No, and you and you were super, you had some wonderful questions. So I appreciate your your ability to ask some thought-provoking things that I hadn't thought of either. Oh, well communication right like you exactly. just said exactly. um thank you so much thank you yep now i'm just floating on the breeze and i feel i'm falling like these leaves i must be cornerstone oh but when i reach that ground i'll share this peace of mind i found i can feel it in my bones but it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine.